This is a video about writing blog posts. One of my most important and frequent pieces of advice that I have for students when it comes to them making blogs is to think beyond just the written word. Sure, the term blogger still for many has strong connotations of someone who generates a lot of written entries. It's much better to think of blogging as content creation, where posts integrate various kinds of media to inform, persuade and engage. That being said, never underestimate the importance of being able to write well. I'll come back to the integration of other media content into blog posts in the next episode, but for now, let's focus on the importance of writing clearly, writing fluently, writing grammatically, and writing with a tone that fits. On that note, a frequently asked question I get about writing blog posts is what writing style should be used? Should they be formal or informal? Well, that's a hard question to answer in a clear-cut way, as blogs can serve many different functions. But writing a blog is certainly not the same as writing an essay, which generally involves the use of a highly formal, ultra-scholarly tone. Some blog posts that students are asked to write might require them to demonstrate critical thinking and the use of scholarly sources, so they might not be different from an essay in every way. Drawing on a book or journal article by including a short quotation or paraphrasing a key point, just as you would in an essay, can really enhance one's argument. You don't want such blogs to become highly personal, opinionated, diary-like entries. They shouldn't be just unsubstantiated reflections or rants on a given topic. The audience for those kinds of posts will likely be quite limited, and readers probably won't be persuaded if their views don't already match up with those expressed in the blog. But you don't have to sound like you're writing in the style of an academic lecture that puts people to sleep. You can bring some personality into it. Let's tease out some other key differences between writing blogs and writing essays. In an essay, you don't have a fully formed paragraph until you have at least three sentences. Whereas in a blog post, three sentences might be the ideal length for many paragraphs, but it's probably the maximum length as well. Using what is called chunking in online writing takes the nature of online reading into account. Really long paragraphs are hard to engage with on the screen. At the same time, you don't want to just compile a series of fragmentary sentences that drift around on their own and that look like they don't have much to do with each other and you haven't put much thought into the structure. In an essay, you wouldn't usually divide your work into sections with subheadings unless your essay was of a very substantial length. In a blog post, using a few section subheadings can be a really valuable way to help structure your post and flag key ideas. But obviously don't use too many section headings, and don't think of them as compulsory for blog posts either. A hallmark of great writing, and not only in blog posts, is a smooth and coherent movement between the general and the specific. I explained this when I was talking to a group of students in a seminar a few years ago about what makes good writing generally. I got a student to record this as a live Periscope video on my phone. Apologies for the vertical filming and relatively poor audio quality here, but this spontaneous little broadcast wasn't initially designed for YouTube. Great writing, not only good writing, but great writing, has always been about the movement between the general, or the universal, and the particular, or the specific. I've done research on, this is going to sound irrelevant, but I've done research on Holocaust survivor testimony. Those Holocaust survivors whose books have been read and reread and reread and reread and set on book lists are those who can move very well between the general and the specific. Why am I even mentioning that? Well, with your blog post, you're looking at the specific, your analysis, you're analysing a particular example. Where your research comes in, that's the general. You're making a general point or argument, or you're engaging with a certain contention around online identity as a whole, and you're using that to introduce or reinforce a point you might make about your own online identity, the particular and the specific. So it's kind of what you do with essays all the time, but probably don't think about it that way. The movement between the general and the particular is great writing. Look for great examples. Do some research on blogs, see what engages you, see what engages other people. Most importantly, open up your site and make a blog post. Share it out there and ask for feedback. Start to interact with other students' blogs. It's also a great idea to enable blog comments to allow other users to interact with your posts and allow you to thank them in turn when they engage with your content. As in all learning, feedback plays a major role in success, and it's not just the formal feedback from a marker that can result in this. 
often the informal feedback that you might obtain from peers and even other people online will be just as valuable and even more rewarding. Most of all, you will learn by making and doing. Or as I said at the end of that Periscope broadcast... And the other question I've been asked is how to start a blog post. Just start one.